Hello, my name is Troy Sanders, and I play bass guitar for the band Mastodon. Right. Um, with the new album that came out, I've read that you guys have, you, instead of complicating things, you kind of simplified it and just let it flow naturally. Um, also, with the artwork, you made some more changes. There were a lot of changes with this album. How come you guys decided to do that? Well, it seemed like uh, with the previous four records we've done, they were all chapters dealing with uh, with various elements. Remission was with Fire, Leviathan, Water, Blood Mountain, Elements of Earth, Crack the Sky, the Element of Ether. So it seemed like the, uh, the chapters of, the elemental chapters were complete and we kind of closed that book. So we had a clean slate to, 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 to work with and uh, it just seemed like a good time to change everything. Um, we didn't want to go deeper with a more bizarre conceptual album this time. We didn't want to piece together nine and twelve minute songs that were very complex. Um, so we had, we had a very uh, almost stress-free approach where we could, uh, lyrical content and musical content, we were free to do anything that we, that we really gravitated towards. Um, felt like a good time to uh, change the album art. Uh, we worked with a gentleman named A.J. Fossick who created this massive wood sculpture for the cover and um, uh, you know had a new font and uh, worked with a new producer. It just it just it was good to to just refresh ourselves and and kind of you know anything that was expected from us we kind of flipped it completely over and and uh, you know we like to surprise ourselves as much as we want to throw a curveball at the rest of the world. Okay. In one of those curveballs, you guys actually used a theremin in one of the songs. Not nope. a lot of bands can say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We wanted to use a theremin on, on the Crack the Sky album because it was de dealing with, uh, you know, ether. <laughs> and, uh, but it just didn't quite work out. Okay. Um, I've checked the set lists that you guys have been using throughout this tour. Uh, a lot of the songs are off of The Hunter. Um, how, what has the reaction been like from the fans to the new stuff? So far, the reaction uh, to all the new stuff, all, all the Hunter material, has been very positive. Um, I think the songs that, that made that record, uh, it's it's nice that we play those live, and it's it's more short bursts. You know, every song is three to four minutes, roughly, and it's just got its own uh, compacted energy. And uh, following up from Crack the Sky album, it's it's got more uh, immediacy, I guess. It's it's just uh, it's just uh, you know that little fire we call rock and roll is uh, the energy from the stage has really gone over well to the crowd and then from them back to us creating that wonderful circle of energy okay. so so far so good all right and then after you guys finish with this tour are you guys gonna write new music or do you know what you're gonna do no we still have uh, a lot of the world to to explore with the okay. with this uh, the hunter cycle um, we're doing five weeks across the US mm -hmm. and Canada now go home for just a short week Okay. And then we're going uh, overseas to to do uh, the festival circuit, and uh, that's always overwhelming in a good way. It's just so massive over there. Right. Um, and then we'll probably do some other things here and there uh, to finish off the physical year of 2012. And then uh, hopefully some new ideas will come to us. But we don't we don't really ever put a timetable on that. We kind of let let that happen naturally. You know, when everyone's motivated and have the is inspired. And, Really, want, we're, we all need to be excited to go down to the rehearsal space right. together and, and be really into it. Okay. So uh, I would imagine some new material, hopefully, you know, next year. But uh, the hunter is still very fresh, and we're 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 really proud to be out, you know, touring the world right. on this record. You mentioned festivals. Do you prefer playing big festivals like that, or do you prefer like club arena shows? You know, the the, the clubs and theaters, uh, the vibe is much different from the massive festivals, but there's pros and cons to both of them, or there's 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 good things about both of them, and thankfully we're able to do a lot of both. Um, the energy is more intimate uh, in clubs and theaters, um, and that's 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 probably our, our favorite environment to play, is somewhere like we are tonight. But the festivals, it's just, uh, it's so massive, and, and, and it's... You know, you look out and you see 40,000 faces, or you know, even 15,000. Or the biggest festival I believe we played was the Roskilde Festival last year, and there was 80 something thousand people there. And it's just it's a sea of dots, which are people's heads, as far as you can see. And it's just, it's over. It's just amazing. You know, it's hard to wrap your head around that you're actually just playing your guitar with your friends, and mm -hmm. there's that many people there to hopefully enjoy it. When you go to the festivals, do you get a chance to see the other bands? Or? Sometimes we uh, 
we know we, we're fortunate enough to, to see other bands, but a lot of times you kind of roll in, do your thing, and then you're out. Um, Heading to the next one. Yeah, you know, a lot of festivals that we play, are the, 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 route, the routing is, is it's not the most economical routing, but to, in order to play a lot of these festivals, you have to do a lot of double drives and okay. things of that nature. But uh, yeah, if we can ever see, you know, we're, we're fans of music, of course, mm -hmm. so if and when we can see other bands, it's always a, it's always a bonus. Okay. Um, as part of Record Store Day, you guys are going to be releasing a cover of one of Feist's songs. Yeah. Um, how did that come to be? Last year, um, we performed on a on a, uh, a TV show in the UK called Jules Holland, okay. and uh, Feist was there, and we were quite unfamiliar with them uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. And they just they just blew us away. They were, they were so so dynamic and so pretty, and uh, <laughs> it just struck us as a very very cool and unique band. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, our guitar player Brent was talking to Leslie and said, "You know, we it'd be really cool to maybe do something together somehow, some way." And you say that with a lot of people that you meet. You know, I'd love to jam with you or do something with you and right. collaborate somehow. But uh, sure enough, a couple weeks later, they just stayed in, in touch, and then the idea to do something to support independent music stores uh, came about. And we had the time to do it to record their song, and uh, thankfully they had the time to record our song. And, you know, it's one of those unexpected things right. that I think turned out very beautifully. Okay. Did you guys choose which songs they would do? And no, they just uh, okay. you know we said any any song of ours, you know, take it and please make it pretty. You know, <laughs> we knew they would, and uh, we kind of took one of their songs and just dirtied it up a little bit. Okay. But yeah, it's really cool. I can't wait to get my physical copy of it. it should be. <laughs> I heard it's very... supposed to be pink. Yeah, it's, I, think. I, I think it is pink. <laughs> All right. Um, Speaking of covers, I don't know if you've seen some of the piano covers on YouTube. Of no, your I just was informed about. Yeah. I heard that uh, someone it was did, quite beautiful, but I, yeah. I haven't. There's like a full cover of um, Leviathan, like straight through. Wow. Yeah, it's it's that beautiful actually. It's cool. You know, you you hear what you guys did, right? And then you hear the piano version. It's quite a contrast. Yeah, I need to. I haven't <laughs> seen that. I, I would like to hear that though. Okay. Um, I came across a photo not too long ago of you guys with Barney and friends. Yeah. <laughs> Again, how did that come yeah, to me? We partied with Barney and friends. <laughs> it was in Indianapolis, Indiana. We arrived at the uh, Egyptian ballroom, and there's two venues in this massive building. And uh, the family show Barney and friends was performing in the daytime. Okay. And then we were in the next venue over, and uh, we were doing our sound check, and we got calls over the radio that. You need to cut out the sound check. You're scaring all the kids <laughs> and the families in the Barney show next door. <laughs> so we had to postpone our sound check. But um, afterwards, the uh, during our last song of that tour, we played our song "Creature Lives," and the entire cast and crew of Barney came on stage and jammed with us. Okay. I mean, we're into dinosaurs, <laughs> so it was a perfect uh, combination. And it was funny. We wound up hanging out with all those guys and, and girls for up until our bus calls, and it was quite funny how our touring lives were very similar. Right. Yeah, they were going to Chicago that night, we were going to Detroit or something, and they were living off of deli trays, and so were we, and you know, they just played a show, we just played a show, it was like, wow, <laughs> a lot of similarities that I've never really, never really thought about before. <laughs> okay. But it was really cool. I can imagine. Um, speaking of viral things, right now Dave Grohl is actually putting out mixtapes of the, um, I forget the name of the studio, the Sound City yeah. studio. He's making little mixtapes and just leaving them around for fans to find. Um, are you guys part of the documentary that he's doing? Um, if we are a part of that documentary, I'm unaware. Oh, okay. I don't know. That's the first I've heard of that. Okay. Well, I know we when we were in there recording last year, uh, he did pop by, okay. and uh, um, he was just telling us how you know he was flashing back 20 years ago when they when Nirvana did their Nevermind record there and. <laughs> and how nothing had changed, and you know the floors and the walls, everything was still straight out of the '70s, and it was a historic uh, time for us. It was, it's a, a, you know such a legendary building, and uh, we were really happy to to record there. Okay. Uh, there was some special magic in the air. All right, and then finally, just what does the rest of 2012 hold for you? Well, the rest of 2012, we have a we have a full plate of touring ahead of us, okay. but uh, we're hungry. It's like a buffet. You know, we got all these shows to choose from, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna eat them all, you know, okay. and uh, store up enough, uh, you know, food for the winter. <laughs> no, we just had a lot of touring ahead of us, and okay. and uh, that's good though. We like it. It's it's a it's a good thing. We're very fortunate.
Alright. Okay. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you.